feels weird welcoming you on the show because i mean we're business partners and we've known each yeah. other for so many years now we're doing work non-stop together but i appreciate yep. you taking the time to come on on today but i want to learn a little bit more about you i feel like we've had you know a relationship business-wise for so long but i want to hear a little bit about your story how you got started in the digital media marketing space and obviously mm -hmm. now we own the marketing agency together so it'd be cool to hear your story from start to what we're doing now and kind of hearing a little bit more about your vision and your experience as we scale this business opportunity to hopefully 50 to 100 million at some, at some point in the future. <laughs> of course, man. And thank you for having me on the show. I'm excited to to be a guest finally. I know we've been talking about it for a while. Oh, yeah. And now we got yeah. the, the podcast set up looking good, man. We're official. No more. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have any more, uh, you know, couch talks that I have with the one camera. <laughs> so um, th so tell me a little bit about yourself, man. You're, you're from Boston originally that you grew up there, like start to start to finish, like from Boston, born and raised, and then yeah. went off to college in Boston as well, right? Yeah. So uh, I got an interesting story because um, – First generation Nigerian American, so my parents came here actually in the eighties. Yeah, oh, wow. um, and youngest of four, and all of my sisters were actually born like across like the U.S. Yeah. Um, couple born in Connecticut, born in Alabama, and then by the time my family moved up to the Boston area, that's mm -hmm. when I came along. Okay. Um, but I feel like with that kind of first generation mentality, just comes with like the aspirations to want to do more, right? Because yeah. your parents took such a big risk leaving their home country, leaving their family. So it's kind of like my whole life, I've kind of just had a vision of how do I take it to the next level, yeah. kind of leave something for my lineage. Um, and ownership, just kind of being an entrepreneur was always something that naturally I just, I, I gravitated towards. Yeah. Um, so that kind of started in like the simplest forms, right? It's like being like five years old, trying to landscape for your neighbor and get like $5 so you can go to... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the local store or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then, funny enough, like, the biggest taste of entrepreneurship that I got at a young age honestly came from music. So Really? Music was always something that was, like, my, my first passion and first love. Uh -huh. um, it started with my older sister buying me, like, a Kanye West, like, called Dropout CD. I was, like, eight Hell years yeah. old. And I'm, like, wow, these beats are, like, I don't know what it is. I, I love this. This is, this is really cool. Uh -huh. um, funny enough, when I was 11 years old, my mom signed me up for piano lessons, and I, I was pissed, like, because I, I just thought, you know how kids are, they're, yeah, they're yeah. like, oh, that's, like, soft, like, that's, like, yeah. whatever. We get made um, fun of at school. Yeah, like, for, yeah, for trying to actually, like, learn and, like, yeah. become, like, well-rounded, but um, <laughs> my piano teacher actually was a local DJ and producer, Oh shit. so it actually ended up being, like, one of the biggest things that happened in my life, because he not only was teaching me how to play piano, yeah. but then he also got me into, like, production and I started selling beats for like fifteen dollars yeah, in high school, dope. just doing, and that's where I was kind of like, "Oh wait, this is something that I'm passionate about, uh -huh. and it can actually bring me some money." Obviously, on a very lower scale, but sure. um, some value you're gonna be giving yourself, right, from learning exactly. that skill, from a skill that I already was gonna hone and work on, yeah, already because I enjoyed it. So that kind of gave me a direction of like what entrepreneurship could be. Yeah. Um, I wasn't really taking it that seriously until it was time to go to school. So like you said, Boston area went to university of Massachusetts Amherst. So that's like, that's like three and a half hours West of Boston. It's not really even, it's not yeah. close at all. It's still technically in state, but yeah. closer to New York. So okay. basically before I, you know, ever step foot on UMass, it's like, what is your major going to be? Right. Yeah. Um, and I just, I decided business, right? Because I figured if I want to be an entrepreneur someday, I don't know what it's going to be. Got to learn somewhere, right? I got to learn something. And at that point, I'm thinking I might be like the next Metro booming. Like, I'm yeah, thinking, yeah. I'm just <laughs> yeah, thinking, like, yeah. what can I do? Um, so marketing kind of, I gravitated towards that because I figured I've always been like good at math, but it wasn't my favorite in school. Yeah. Um, always been creative, like obviously with music and, and just had, this was into like artistic things. When I was sure. a child, I was always, um doing like art shows and stuff like that i used to draw a lot yeah um and i was like marketing i felt like it exposed me or could expose me to every single industry it's something everything needs mm -hmm. um every business needs and i figured that's the one thing that if i owned my own company no matter what it was like i would want to be able to handle my own marketing i'll pay someone else to do yeah. accounting or, or some of the other stuff that i don't really care for so you said that your parents came from Nigeria in the 80s, right? So tell me a little bit, did they just move from 
Nigeria straight to the States? Was it Connecticut? Was it more? So, was it in Alabama, you said, as well? Yeah, so my dad was actually the first one to come over, um, and he went to New York. So strong ties to New York, always loved New York. Um, and then my mom came after him, and they actually attended uh, UConn, University of Connecticut, where they both got their PhDs. Um, so they came here for yeah. e education. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of bounced around after my sisters were born, kind of chasing the jobs that my mom or dad would get, and then ultimately settled down in, in the Boston, Massachusetts area because that's what they liked the most out of, you know, the areas that they had seen. Everything else. Yeah. You know, it's crazy that they come over here for, like, an education aspect, yeah, right? right? And then you go the entrepreneur route, obviously, yeah. with what you're doing now. I know you're, you're at Google and you started a marketing agency yeah. um, as well. It's interesting because it feels like first generation like that, they would kind of like hammer in that you just need to get a really great education, yeah. go on, be a doctor, lawyer, you know, some, exactly, of, those, some yeah. of those typical, you know, routes. So it's interesting. You said that almost from the beginning, you've always had an interest in entrepreneur world. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you think that is? Do you think that that's more of like an innate feeling coming from a different country? Like your family is born somewhere else and you think that's like the American dream. Is that more of something you think is natural or something you've picked up over time? Just like yeah. meeting with people knowing what people are up to, is that is it kind of like a network thing or you think it's more like an innate thing? No, that's a, that's a good question. I think it is honestly kind of innate. Um, but going back to the piece around education, that's like everything, especially with, I mean, all the immigrants I've met, that's like everything because yeah. a lot of times that is the ticket out, right? Yeah. Um, but I think just since I was born, I kind of just gravitated towards how can I – Make money. Be independent and, yeah, make my own money. Like, I've yeah. always wanted to be independent, even though I was the youngest of four. Um, my sisters are, there's a big age gap. So I kind of grew up almost not the only child, but just, like, the only one in the house for yeah, no, I feel some you. of the formative years. Yeah. Um, had a lot of friends and, and stuff, but I, I don't know. I've just always been about, like, independent. Like, I want to be able to just handle my own, like, wanted to be able to buy my own clothes as soon yeah. as I started working at 14 on no. the W-2. Yeah. Um, everything under the table before that, but um, it, it was kind of just an innate feeling. But the cool thing, I actually learned this recently, actually this year, um, I didn't know that my dad actually always had a dream of actually starting a business back in Nigeria, like really? ultimately returning to Nigeria and, and starting a business there because there's obviously a lot of opportunity there. Of course. Um, and so that kind of made me feel good just knowing like, hey, like I'm actually following in his footsteps, but doing it here. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I think for me, it's always just thinking about, like I, I want to do something generational. Like I I want to leave an impact where it's like my grandkids, great grandkids are like, damn, your great grandfather, like he, he did this and this. And I want to set an example and also just make life easier, kind of move them Push it down. One step, yeah, like my parents did for me. Like they came here, took a big risk. Yeah. And then um, that gave me like the understanding our education is important. Like give me the baseline to be able to take it to this level. Um, and then hopefully the next generations, they can have my baseline that's hopefully set pretty high. Yeah. And, and then keep doing it too. So that's, I think it's an innate feeling. Just, yeah. yeah. That's a dope drive, man. I feel like that's why we're so level-headed and level-set with each other is because very similar story, except not immigrant-based. It's more just growing up mm -hmm. with literally nothing. You know, one of five kids, single mom, works yep. three jobs just to put clothes on our back, would do anything for us. So, like, mm -hmm. learning firsthand hard work and then kind of always leading. She was leading by example, and it kind of, like, I learned what yeah. I had to do to make sure that I could give everybody a better life. You know, like, yeah. give back to her, give back to my sister, give back to my family, and then you know, never have like my kids struggle. Like, you yeah. know, we struggled a little bit, you know? So it's yeah. like why I never wanted to put that in my family situation. So it's almost like, I just want to create that change belief, but my mom worked her ass off, you know? So mm -hmm. she's like also giving me an opportunity to get out, always saying, go to college, get out of this town, you know, go make something of yourself, stay in school, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like yeah. the same, you know, in a different, sure. in a different level, but yeah. It's pretty interesting that that's, I feel like that's why we're so level set with everything that goes on. So, yeah. But, um, no, it's such it's a, it's, models. yeah, man, it's dope. It's dope. You look up to people in different ways. And I think that, um, there's just such a, it kind of like, I have the same feeling as you. I feel like it's an innate thing, right? I feel like it's inside of you, but it's also through your experience, right? It's like things that you see and you kind of use things as you don't ever want to get to that point. It's almost like a fear of, I never want to go back to this and I just want to yeah, keep exactly. progressing and as the future it holds. No, exactly. And it's kind of like, um, again, like my siblings have been huge in my life, but it's that feeling of like, 
I don't want to be the one that's looked at as like no matter what I've done, yeah. like every job I've worked, like every, every class I've been in, mm. I don't want to be looked at as like the one that was holding it back or the one that was doing the worst. Like it's yeah. that's always it's been like something in me that's like I need to. It, it's competitive nature, I of think. Course, yeah. But even with my sisters who are super successful, I'm like I'm trying to be yeah the best, and and they all they always tell me like I'm I'm on that track. And yeah, like, they're proud of me, and it's exactly. having it's not that a competition support. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. It's not a competition, and it's just like. But proud, there's like a competitive yeah. edge. You're like, I want to exactly. get to that point too. Cause I saw you, it's almost like an inspiration, right? Like yeah, my exactly. sister the same way, super successful in what she's done. She's climbed the corporate ladder mm -hmm. and she's put herself in a position. And I'm like, I really want what she's done, but more. And it's not like exactly. a competitive thing. It's more of like, she set that example. And I just want to continue that, you know, that legacy within the family tree. You know? Exactly. I feel like that's yeah. kind of like similar situation with you, right? Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, and I was going to say as well, like, cause we we're kind of talking about, my timeline of like my, my whole journey yeah. um, professionally. And so after college, of course, I mean, as soon as I graduated, had to hit the job or hit the ground running with like my first full-time job. I think I started like in May yeah. of 2017. I graduated in May, 2017. Mm -hmm. um, and something about just like not being scared to take a risk. I'm, I'm pretty grateful that I have that naturally as well. Yeah. Um, but I remember a lot of people just like opted to move back home for a year or so or whatever. And um, I understand everyone's situation is different. And mm -hmm. I was able to come into a opportunity to actually get a pretty cheap like living situation in the city, mm -hmm. um, right out of school about like a month or two out of school. Yeah. And I knew that at the job I was at, like it wasn't making that much. It was, it was like base level marketing salary. I got mm -hmm. a job at one of the um, internship companies that I did over my four years. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I'd probably be stretching myself a little thin to make that jump to the city right away. But I also knew that that would naturally just motivate me to figure out other ways to make more income so that I could sustain it. Yeah. Um, and that's where it kind of drove me to work the nine to five, but then also figure out, okay, at my nine to five, I'm, at the time I was doing SEO, mm -hmm. I'm already learning this craft. I'm already, you know, an expert in it, considered an expert in it. Yeah. So are there other people that could benefit from my skill set? And I started making connections in Boston and um, it, it kind of just, uh, a lot of things have just happened kind of naturally yeah. for me, I feel, just because I was putting in the work and then I don't know if you, you believe in like higher power and all that yeah, stuff, yeah, I don't yeah. know, but things just fell into place because I feel like someone noticed, you know, it, my peers noticed and so, someone noticed and then opportunities came to me. And then, yeah. Um, ultimately ended up meeting someone at that first full-time job that brought me into my first actual LLC. First time doing, um, you know, a legit, uh, you know, starting a legit business. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And before we get into that, I want to, I want to touch on, you said SEO and for the people that don't know what SEO is, I would yeah. love to hear just like a high level because you see it all the time. Like there's so many people on social media. There's so many businesses out there. There's so many people creating websites and they're like, Oh yeah, I'm boosting my SEO. But yeah, yeah. It's obviously plugins on these things like Shopify or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. like these just like template pages that say this is we're going to implement mm -hmm. SEO. What is it in your eyes? Like, what is it in a high level that can be more beneficial for people to understand on a more baseline level? Yeah. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. Um, so speaking about how can you optimize your website to show up on those search engine results pages? So whether it's Google or Bing or if you're using Yahoo, whatever. Um, there's a lot that goes into it, but the way that I like to simplify is like almost boosting your website's kind of credit score in mm -hmm. that world of, of search engines, right? So what are the different tactics that I can leverage within this practice called SEO to boost my page's score and make Google, Bing, etc. recommend my page over the competition when people type in, um, you know, running shoes if I sell shoes or sneakers as a retailer. Mm -hmm. um, so... That's like the analogy that I love to use, kind of yeah. boosting your website's credit score on search engine results pages. Yeah. yeah. And that's and it's it's so like it's so important, right? Like we both right. know what that yeah. is. Like you wanna obviously rank higher, it goes hand in hand when you run ads on your product or service. Yeah. When you when you talk about SEO, just like a brief like how do I boost that website score? Like give me like the three top pillars you think to boost that website score. Is it like the backlinks? Is it more so like the 404 errors what what do you what do you think is the most valuable thing you can do in terms of increasing your seo or your website score as you referred to yeah so there's a like i said there's a lot that goes into it um but there's actually 
like three key pillars um, that any SEO specialist is going to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned things like uh, 404 errors and, and backlinks. So that would classify as like technical SEO. Yep. But then there's also like your on-page SEO, which is talking about, all right, in my example, running shoes. Like, do you have keywords on your web page that if Google or Bing, any of these search engines are scanning your page, they understand that that page is about running shoes? Because mm -hmm. ultimately they want to make sure that the user, whatever they're searching for, your landing page can actually help de deliver them that outcome. Yeah. Um, and then there's off page SEO, which you touched on with the backlink. So just mm -hmm. making sure that there's no like spammy web pages that direct to you or cause all of that again, will kind of lower that search credit score analogy that I was talking about. Yeah. Um, so depending on where your website stands, you may have to focus more time in any three of these areas. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, if you're starting a website from scratch, I would say make sure that it's like a very clear structure, clean structure to navigate. So, you know, homepage, if you're selling something, have a shop. Mm -hmm. Don't don't overdo it. Have yeah. an about us section. Make sure that it's keyword rich. Yeah. That's a big thing because when we talk about these search engines, the first step of a search is the keyword, right? So someone's yeah. typing in looking for something, which makes them a great, you know, great lead coming in because mm -hmm. they're clearly in market for something that you're providing. So yeah. you want to make sure that, those keywords and relevant keywords are throughout your web pages and make sure that these search engines understand that that's what you are here to offer. Yeah. And then from the technical and kind of off page standpoints, um, for a brand new website, as long as you don't set it up terribly, terribly, yeah. uh, hopefully you'll be okay on those fronts. Yeah. But that's kind of where you want to start is that on page content, mm -hmm. make sure that it's keyword rich um, and make sure that's relevant. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's interesting because like there's so many competitors out there, right? Like we talk to people all the time and honestly, I still have this thought and wonder all the time about SEO when somebody is selling shoes, right? And there's Nike versus Adidas. They're obviously both going to yeah. be keyword rich. So how is it more of a branding thing? Is it more of the, the backlinking? Is it the off page? Like which one of those three pillars do you focus on to kind of rank above those competitors? So in that example, just cause those are such like powerhouses and, yeah. and it's, of course, going to be harder in that situation. Yeah. Your best bet is going to be running kind of Google ads to try and uh, out them. outbid them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is going to be tough as well, but we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, there's something called indexing. So it's the amount of times that your website, now that you've created your website, it's keyword rich, the amount of times that you have showed up for those relevant searches. Mm -hmm. um, so for web pages like Nike that are getting millions of impressions a day mm -hmm. they're indexing over and over and that's all boosting their score that mm -hmm. that credit score that i was talking about um for a brand new website it's gonna be hard it, it takes time seo honestly one of the reasons why i made the jump from just focusing on seo to we'll talk about it but i ended up doing google ads and, and it's a lot faster pace yeah seo takes a, a little while to kind of ramp up and see the results mm -hmm. um but over time, as you focus on those three core pillars I was talking about, and then you're maybe part pairing it with running Google ads or um, writing blogs and just making sure that your website pops up in more relevant uh, areas, yeah. you'll be able to index more and more, and then you'll get recommended more and more. But okay. it, it does take time to build that up, and it, it could be tough for uh, a newer website or a brand new website, but of course. Yeah, that's, that's where some of those others... That's uh, why services can help. Yeah, and building businesses take time. Obviously, they yeah. don't. You don't Nike and Adidas didn't become those exactly, over like yeah. a year. Which I feel like nowadays everybody has such a short attention span. Yeah. It's like even the clients that we talk to nowadays, man. It's like, oh, I want to see results asap. It's like, well, you kind of have to invest some time, some money, and like kind of exactly. let some people that are experts in the field kind of develop that, right? Yeah, you both been building this brand for two years now, building this company mm -hmm. for two years, and. We're starting to see some pretty significant success now, but it's been a lot of work building those like those structure pieces, investing in our website, investing in ourselves, investing in our structure, company, everything. Mm -hmm. But people like right away have such a short attention span where they want those results like ASAP. Exactly. With SEO, it's kind of not measurable, right? Like right away. So I feel like it kind of steers people away and they're like, oh, I'm boosting my SEO because I'm using one of those templates that are saying that it's SEO yeah. rich. And I'm just like, this doesn't really make too much sense, but... Well, that's um, where that kind of um, that unique strategy that we offer comes into play, right? So for running shoes, it's going to take a while and you will probably never catch up to Nike organically yeah. um, for that keyword. Mm -hmm. But are there any 
brand keywords. Like you should be protecting your brand when it comes up next to your marketing. There shouldn't yeah. be anyone else showing for a website there. Exactly. Are there any, do you specialize in a specific, shoes might not be the best example, but a specific mm-hmm. maybe service line of like medicine. Yeah. And then are there keywords that are there competitors are not playing on that you can own? Yeah. If you can own those because no one else is, is, you know, really targeting them yet, mm-hmm. then that's going to help you index. That's going to help you stand out in those searches. So it's doing that keyword research and understanding where there's lanes for you to immediately yeah. kind of drive that impact with SEO. And then you can work on growing your exposure in other areas over time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure we'll talk about this, but that kind of comes down to like being really great, being really fucking great at one thing and niching mm-hmm. down so, so granular that like, you're focusing on one thing that you're really good at. You're going to show up on those exactly. things that you rank for. So yeah, exactly. It's almost like you're never going to create something like extravagantly new. It's you just kind of have to create a change belief in a certain industry and really focus on that one, one disconnect for something in order to prosper, whether yeah. it's a business service product, whatever it may be. But talked a lot about SEO. I really kind of want to focus, go back a little bit talking about that was your sure. first job. And then you kind of made the jump after that first job. You said SEO, you just wanted to take the jump into paid media, Google ads, or where, where was that? Yeah. So this is actually, um, so yeah. So like I, I, I'll quickly backtrack a bit. So when I was in college, mm-hmm. I actually did a different internship, like every single summer I was in, in college, which um, is, I think unique, a lot of people I know probably didn't do their first internship till maybe junior year, yeah. at least like sophomore year. So uh, my first internship was at a digital market agency, actually in San Diego. Mm-hmm. At that agency, I got exposed to all different teams. They were a full service agency. They did content in-house. I mean, pretty much, I guess, they did content in-house. They did social media, and then they did search. I just kind of stumbled into search. Um, being at school and still having a focus on like music at the time, yeah, I was definitely internet marketing. I'm like, I gotta learn internet marketing. I'm still selling beats and I'm still, uh, I'm paying rent off selling beats to local rappers and stuff yeah, like. Yeah. So I'm like, internet marketing, cool as long as I'm learning something here. Mm-hmm. Ended up getting on the search team um, and they did SEO. So that was okay. something. A lot of a lot of like tedious projects and hours. Um, you mentioned that now there's a lot of like built in like Wix and things like that will just offer SEO. It, yeah. They're they're better than nothing because um, a lot yeah. of websites might have no SEO built in, no yeah. back end stuff. Um, but a lot of that work can be really like time consuming, big spreadsheets. I'm manually writing uh, like different content for a number of advertisers from yeah. like children's toys to um, like movie companies, stuff like that. Yeah. So that was my first exposure. Mm-hmm. Um Fast forward to my senior year when it's time to graduate. The internship I did my junior, senior year, also on the SEO team, they bring me back full time. And I was there for, I think, nine months. But okay. ultimately, I was like, it's... This is not, in San Diego? Um, no, so this is in Boston. Now. Okay, okay. Yeah, so a different company that I worked for junior, senior year. Got summer. it. Yeah, in Boston. Um, but yeah, I was there for like nine months full time. So this is after already having probably, I guess, in total, like a year or two experience in SEO. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, I kind of want to shake things up. I kind of want to do something different. I've been exposed to, um, you know, paid search. So that's like the Google ads component, Bing ads, um, a little bit at these agencies. And I was like, that's kind of cool. And maybe it's the kind of like the the gambler in me. I was like, I like the idea of like managing money and and trying to bid. And um, we can talk more later about how the actual like auctions work. It's called auctions for figuring out who's going to rank where. Mm -hmm. Um, But it comes down to actually having like a a daily budget, monthly budget um, and optimizing bids to basically outbid the competition for that spot so Mm -hmm. that you can be seen in positions one, two, three and down. Um, And I was like, that's more fast paced, immediate results. And it comes down to like my strategy of how I want to manage this money and, and optimize these yeah. ads for whoever my client is. Yeah. Um, so made that jump, honestly, my manager at the time, like he was pretty hurt about it. <laughs> I, I think he made a comment about like, I, I wouldn't like it or something like that. Maybe yeah. I wouldn't last. Um, paid media over the SEO side. He was pissed. He, yeah. Uh, but ended up jumping from that company. And I mean, at the time, man, well, I'm like 21 and I told you I, w- I was barely making anything there. Yeah. Um, I made that jump to the city to, drive myself Hell yeah. at this point i'm also taking on small projects seo on the side mm-hmm. um and this was a pretty big you know pay jump for me to make that, that sure. jump anyway so i took that um hit the ground running small team i've uh, been really lucky in my 
um, you know, corporate career that I've had a lot of like managers that I, I, I really like. Like I've never had a bad manager or anything yeah, like that. That's good, man. Um, huge. And I've learned a lot from every team I've been a part of. So I hit the ground running, paid media, and I honestly I hit the fast track and it really caught on and was able to elevate pretty well there. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it's funny enough, I actually entered that team at a time that they were onboarding a new product, a new Google product, still Google search, still Google ads, mm -hmm. um, but like the enterprise product called uh, Search Ads 360. Okay. Um, so I got to kind of see that from the ground up, what it takes to implement it, how powerful it can be with all the different features. Mm -hmm. um, and then ultimately, like a year and nine months in that role, that's when uh, Google actually came knocking and for that specific Oh, the product. Google reached out to you. You didn't yeah. apply. I've, Damn, every job man. I've had since college, I, they reached out to me. And that's, that's what crazy, I'm saying, man. just kind of that um, <clears throat> work ethic and just putting that into the universe, stuff yeah. has just come from it. And this whole time, in that year and nine month span that I was leveling up on the Google ad side, um, also leveled up my personal um, entrepreneur you know, hunt. Yeah, Instead of course. just doing SEO by myself, I joined the creative collective we called ourselves, mm -hmm. um, where we were doing a lot of different like content marketing and actually like creative yeah. um, for various clients between Boston and New York. Mm -hmm. um, so I was really like, I was really growing a lot at this time, like rapid growth, like understanding yeah. how to write contracts, understand how to negotiate, um, taking on like bigger and bigger clients. I wasn't a one man team. I understand mm -hmm. or I learned the strength in numbers when building sure. a company. Um, and then it all kind of culminated to getting that call, moving to New York. Yep. Um, and then the rest, yeah, the rest is history. That's yeah. crazy, man. So, I mean, there's so many people out there that try to get into Google, like hundreds of thousands, you know, every, like, it seems like month when they put a job posting yeah. out there and they come knocking on your door and you're like, oh yeah, I'll accept Google. Yeah, man. LinkedIn DM. I thought it yeah. was, I thought it was a, uh, <laughs> I thought it was a joke at first. I was like, yeah. this is sketchy. Uh, set up a call. And got another call, really? then another. Yeah, so um, that's crazy, man. Yeah. And that was, this is all for that. Would be, give me a timeline. Is this like 2019, 2018? Yeah, so this is 2019 summer. They actually, so my birthday is June 29th. I got a DM shortly after 4th of July. So I'm coming off like yeah. a, a week of, you know. <laughs> You're on a bender. Yeah, man. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's so, no way. So I'm seeing real. this, like, uh, I'll get to that, like, yeah. the, on Wednesday. You're whatever. seated at the club. You're like, no. Nah, <laughs> I'm no like, way. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. No, nah, I was probably talking shit to my friends. Like, look, yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, man. You know what's <laughs> wild is, like, it's crazy that they actually came knocking because I feel like nowadays, but it might, it's yeah. kind of interesting because paid media and Google ads is, like, mm -hmm. Everybody hears about them now and knows about them. At least I think so. I think it's way more popular than it was four or five years ago. So I feel yeah. like it's cool. Like well, you yeah. kind of caught with that. Exactly. With that it, was, it was perfect timing. Like, and I'll, I'll tell you even a little more of why it was perfect timing. But to your point, I think digital marketing in general, just since, you know, 2020 and everyone kind of having to revamp the how they're, yeah, situation. like you couldn't see people face to face. So people yeah. had to learn what the different channels were. Um, but it was perfect timing because the company I came from, um, they had just got acquired when I joined. Oh, so wow. I think they were just kind of under the, the radar. Um, and then I joined at a time of rapid growth. So maybe the recruiter just kind of noticed like, oh, this, this company, they have some yeah. talented people. And then I ended up being perfect timing. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just, everything works. Hell yeah. Things, yeah. things work in some really mysterious ways, but yeah, I mean, man. that's like, you gotta be really grateful for that, man. That's a oh, crazy always, ass story, always. man. Yeah. That's dope. And you said a couple of things that I want to touch on. One was I kind of want to relate back to the SEO thing while it's fresh because we were talking about SEO and talking about how you can rank higher, you know, above competitors like the Adidas and Nike situation. And then you start talking about yeah. how you can outbid people on the Google ads and paid media side. Yeah. And that's where it becomes a volume play who has more capital, correct? That's yeah. where it's like, okay, now Adidas and Nike are, they're really yeah. powerhouses in the yeah. space, right? But at the same time, it's like who can outbid them on the Google ad side to put more money behind campaigns. Is that kind of mm -hmm. how you rank a little bit higher and create those? That yeah. So, sale? yeah. So when we talked about, uh, SEO search engine optimization, that's what we call organic. So that's like, how can I just organically no money, uh, make myself more presentable to these search engine results pages yep. on the Google ad side. The reason why I was, I gravitated towards it is cause it's faster paced. Cause to your point, uh, it really comes down to like budget and of course, like the strategy behind it, there's different techniques you can optimize your campaigns with, yeah. but uh, 
basically the way that that search and your results page works is it's an auction. Mm -hmm. So, and it happens in a matter of seconds. It's really crazy, but thousands of different sig signals are taken into account by uh, Google in a matter of seconds to understand like who's the better choice for their user. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the biggest ones is called a bid. Okay. So one of the reasons why Google is one of the best like ROI, um, you know, efficient mm -hmm. channels for a company to leverage is the fact that you only get charged when someone clicks on your ad. Yep. So basically what you're telling the system in those, you know, milliseconds is I'm willing to pay X to get a user to click on this ad. Mm -hmm. Whereas your competitor might be willing to pay Z and, and maybe they fall under you. Yeah. But there's all these other factors that some of them really relate to SEO and some of those core like pillars that I touched on earlier, mm -hmm. where Google might say, uh, this they don't really trust you. Yeah, they might say the website score you were talking exactly. about. Exactly, right? so if it's low, then they're obviously not going to hit on that. Yeah, they might say honestly for your competitor because their website is amazing, they can get this top spot for a little cheaper than you would. Yeah, but if you have crazy money and you're willing to outbid them by whatever, yeah. and we'll show you, but you're you're kind of sketchy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more of like if you have more money, you're better, but really you're kind of you're on like yeah. shaky shaky yeah. ground there. Yeah, and I can't crazy. I can't like iterate enough that it's a lot of signals that go into it but one of yeah. like the if we're just simplifying it mm -hmm. there's a bid um and and yeah if you can outbid your competitor you're, you're in a yeah. good position so yeah. it's really capital or structure is really what helps you rank a lot higher right? yeah yeah both together if you ha if you're covering on all sides so that's why um if you're working with a talented agency on your seo and on your google ads yeah um sky's the limit of course yeah you know, it's crazy because Google ads and obviously people run Instagram ads, meta ads, LinkedIn ads, all the social media platforms. But like you said, Google is best because it's cost per click. Whereas those social medias are like almost like cost per viewer impression. So I could be paying, you know, a thousand dollars for a hundred thousand impressions, mm -hmm. which sounds good. But yeah, how many times have we seen fake bots on Instagram, fake bots on, on yeah, Facebook? Exactly. It's like, who are these 100,000 accounts? Like, is it just wasted air? Is it a wasted account? Like, where is it going? And are those qualified leads for me to even bring in some business, whether it's I'm I'm owning a shoe brand or I have a service or a marketing mm -hmm. agency or whatever I have, you know, it could be like a real estate company. Like, yeah. am I generating the right leads? Am I contacting the right people? Obviously, the strategies, question. but... Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, all these channels get give you the ability to really create audiences and, yep. and try and zero into like exactly who you're looking for. But no matter which way we kind of, you know, shape it yep. um, in marketing, we always think about what we call like the marketing funnel. Right. Mm -hmm. So where did these two channels in this example, like a Facebook and meta and where Google would fit anything that's like kind of display and uh, cost per thousand impressions where you were mentioning like a CPM model. Um, where you're charged per thousands of eyes that see it, just see an impression, but maybe they didn't take action on the ad. Yeah, that's gonna sit in that top funnel, right? Yeah. So it's like it's more so for for awareness. I just want people to see me, mm -hmm. um, maybe get familiar with the the name. Yep. But ultimately, if you have a full funnel approach, so say you're that shoe brand, if you're running ads on Meta and it's like great content, people see you. Maybe they don't action it there, but um, there's a statistic where like people. Honestly, they normally go between like three or so different devices uh, before making a buying decision. Mm -hmm. um, so someone might see your ad on Facebook and it's like, oh, I recognize that branding, that logo. It's great. And then ultimately they might search for more you know, info about your product on Google. Yeah. And again, because that whole process starts with someone actively searching for a keyword that's related to you, mm -hmm. they're already in market for whatever your product or solution is. Yeah, so smart. maybe they saw the ad on Instagram. Maybe they've seen it a couple of times. Yeah. Maybe they're making up 10% of that 1,000 impressions you were just charged for. Yeah. But then they say, all right, let me search this brand name because let me just see. I've never heard of them. Let me see yeah. if they're legit. Is their website good? Yeah. SEO. Um, but then they click on the Google ad and now they're they're buying something. Yeah. So it all works together. Hand in hand. Yeah. I feel like people don't have that full picture perspective, man, because even what you're saying, for example, I saw this brand on social media so many times, TikTok, Instagram, GLD, the jewelry brand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They it must be they must have a crazy budget. Their budget's they, crazy. They're yeah. just probably spending <laughs> out the ass, but honestly the ROI must be there because I kept seeing it over and over again and I'm like, yeah. "All right, just keep swiping by. Keep swiping by." But it creates that like 
mm-hmm. that mentality, that brand awareness. And I'm like, yeah. oh, GLD now. And I'm seeing exactly. it like two months later. I'm like, you know what? That's kind of fire. That's exactly. kind of fire. And then I'll go to their website. I'll go to Google. And by the time exactly. I'm at Google, I'm like, you already. I'm kind of warm lead now. Like, I'm like, oh, fuck this exactly. brand. But now I'm like, oh, wait, this is kind of dope. And it's that's the fun one. You started up here just as, hey, let's cast a wide net. Yep. And then by the time you got to Google, it's like, we almost have them. Yeah. Once he clicked on that ad. Conversion. Yeah. Sale. But, which is crazy because there's so many damn people goes back to our first conversation. It's like people want results now where I've seen GLD be, mm. you know, launching ads out there for a year, like mm. probably over, you know, like yep. they're, they're still running those campaigns and it's still creating that marketing's all psychology, right? It's like literally it's all just like trying to get the consumer to purchase your product or service. If it's a service. It's a little different, but if it's a product, mm. it's really just like get your brand out there, show them why you're really fucking good at this one service or why your product is the best. And you can kind of convert them slowly. I've had exposure to like all types of industries, which again, I'm, I'm grateful for Cause yeah. now, I mean, how many we're hopping on calls left and right. And it's, yeah. it's a to B everywhere, man. But, um, with that comes like we call conversion delay. Everyone's got a, a different conversion delay. Yeah. So like uh, uh, engagement rings or something that's very expensive, mm. it might take someone two weeks from the time that they saw your Google ad, maybe even four weeks from the time they saw your Instagram ad to ultimately become a purchase. Yeah. Whereas maybe, you know, a cheap product, maybe like you're selling like hot sauce or something. Yep. They might see the ad today, and they're probably going to buy today. They want hot sauce. It's they like want it right bucks. away. Yeah, they yeah, want yeah. it right away. But you see, like, the varying price points and just from the varying industries, the nature of the industry, that that timeline between the first time that they saw any content related to any ad to the time that they became actual customer, yeah. it can really vary. But, again, if you have a full funnel approach where you hit them with a Instagram ad a month ago because yep. you're, you're just casting the wide net, then that has a residual impact on, uh, you know, your conversion rate on Google. Yeah, um, it's 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 really crazy how it all works together. Everybody yeah. has their own their own journey, and it's it's yeah. really important. Like that marketing funnel that you touched on is really important, and mm-hmm. you know we talk about this all the time on every sales call that we have. But it'd be cool for you to touch on like you know casting a wide net on social media might be top funnel, Google might be middle funnel. Would you agree with that? Like kind of like kind of Google ads because you're somewhat of a warm lead, and then what is the structure you see as your funnel it's a little different for everybody but so it kind of and honestly comes down to the different strategies that you're leveraging within those channels too because i mean someone can complete kind of the full funnel on meta of course it's not to say that they can't you can have an ad where it's like shop now go to the website and then you convert yep um but so in each of these channels you can actually attack each phase of the funnel Mm -hmm. so on google ads for example you can run campaigns or it's just get me as many impressions as possible. So get me as many eyes on Google as possible. Yep. But then you can also run down funnel campaigns like that are really directed towards driving purchases. Maybe you're optimizing them for on-site checkout or on-site purchase, like thank you page. Mm-hmm. So you know, you can track that this convert or that this campaign drove 30 purchases this month. Mm-hmm. So you can attack all of the stages in the funnel, um, on each of these individual channels. Yeah. But if we're just kind of taking a step back and looking at where these channels might be best served, um, then it's it's like things like display or anything that's leveraging like um, cost per thousand impressions, like maybe a, a reel on Instagram, I would yeah. say falls top funnel, whereas Google generally is more down funnel because a lot of people are already searching, searching for something, for something that's relevant to your website. Yeah, yeah. and that's where kind of paying for the ad comes in key because if you're yeah. ranking above the competitor they're like there and say they just wanted uh you know shoes we'll keep we'll stay with that example if mm-hmm. you're paying to rank higher you're obviously more likely going to be seen rather than if you don't pay for anything and you come up on like page four no one's going to page four on exactly your shoes so and then also talking about the middle of the funnel that can be like your remarketing campaign so yeah. you, you have the ability to kind of reserve ads to people that maybe like spent a certain time looking at your video ad yeah maybe they visit the website but didn't convert and then you're like trying to reposition oh yeah. like notice that you stopped by like mm-hmm. so there's like in each channel you can you can kind of attack all yeah. three phases so many different ways to get targeted now and then like i yeah. get random texts it's like hey you still yeah. want our uh, hotel <laughs> sense i'm like what the hell exactly like, yeah. I, I, yeah i do kind of want that hotel or i sense. noticed you left something in your cart <laughs> yeah, like, like yeah, who the hell like are you that. man yeah and it's crazy <laughs> but 
Um, and then I, obviously the bottom of the funnel is that conversion, which comes from your website yeah. and having like a really nice user experience to convert. And that's obviously exactly. your product or service is at the very bottom because it's like if they don't want it, they're obviously not going to pay for it. So yeah. a checkout is really bottom. But it's it's crazy, like brand awareness at the top and then warm leads and then retargeting campaigns. And at the bottom, it's really that ultimate conversion. Yeah, take that like action. It. Exactly. Yeah. And it all comes down to brand awareness, really. It's like who you have on your team. Do they like you? Are they comfortable? Can you trust? Can you yeah. trust them? Are you sketchy? Like you're, so there's some websites we talk to, like people, like we pull them up before we get on the call. We're like, there's no shot. Yeah. They're going <laughs> to generate any money. These are the sketchy guys that SEO score, like 20. Exactly. Yeah, because <laughs> like, even like we were talking about, like if you get that user on your website, whether it's from Google Ads, TikTok, any of these channels, you get them on the website and then they don't convert, it can come down to, a number of things like maybe like i said maybe it's a high ticket thing and it's like all right, i gotta think about this i gotta budget yeah or it could just be well this website is, is terrible yeah there's a stat in seo i think it's people on average um it's like they only spend like eight seconds or so on the mm -hmm. website before oh, wow. besides they before, they, bounce before they decide like never mind um if the website takes too long to load i know i do this i'll be like, all right screw it like yeah. i'm not even yeah what's the point um, so there's a lot of things tying back to the SEO. Like once you get them on the website, it should be a slam dunk. If Easy. if it's if it's seamless and like it should be they should be converting as, as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Um but again, depending on other factors like maybe the price or whatever, maybe they need to take it back and think about it. But yeah, you don't want to ever lose them because your website was yeah not up to par. Which also kind of steers into the other side of like what we offer and what we do and we don't have to get too much into detail. It's like that's the content piece to it. It's like having mm -hmm. really great video videos that are high quality, you know, 4K imaging or, or videos. Like you really want to have really yeah. qu high quality graphics, images, videos like all over the place so it's not like you know, a stock photo on your, on your website. That's like, what the hell is this? Just like, this mm -hmm. doesn't have anything to pertain to you or like, this isn't show me that you have more value. It's really like a visual experience once you're on the website as well. So yeah, uh, we don't have to get too in depth, but like, that's also a huge important piece to it. But I kind of want to steer way back to when we were talking about you also were, once you got approached by Google, you've been there for almost five years now or approaching five years, which is crazy, man. And obviously the, yeah. the agency's taken off um, yeah. now. So, We'll see what the future unholds on that, but we'll yeah. talk. Uh, we'll talk about like the creative that you were talking with, or that you started with. You said you had a lot of, you know, you're working with them on contracts and doing some SEO side work and helping them out in, in different in different aspects. Is that kind of where the entrepreneur like kind of showed you where how to run a business? Maybe yeah. it wasn't the best, and then you kind of started your own thing. What was what was that journey? Yeah, so definitely like yeah, so that kind of comes full circle, right? Like yep. learning what be, being an entrepreneur is in the most simple form, just shoveling driveways and stuff like that. And then that creative collective I was a part of was the first taste of like, this is, all right, we got an LLC. This is, we're doing real contracts, like terms of agreements, like learning what it, more of the admin stuff. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Like I've, I've known how to do the work. Cause the I'm boring like, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I've known how to do the actual work. Cause that's kind of, I've been a worker. Yep. Um, but now it's like, all right, if you're running it, this is what goes into it. And I still, they didn't know a lot about like um, accounting or anything like that. Yeah. that. That had to come over time. But that was my first taste of like the admin work and, and kind of managing. Um, and, and that was a great experience. Yeah. You got, you got burned a couple of times. You learned from that. Just not having uh, like the right structure in place. Yeah, yeah. And you, the contracts get better and better. I don't even know how many contracts I, I've written oh, at this point crazy. in my life, but it's like, it's something where it doesn't, doesn't scare me at all anymore. I've yeah. been there many times invoicing, mm -hmm. um, I read, yeah, I started learning like the operations that go into it. And I mean, just huge um, piece to operating yeah, a business, right? Exactly. Yeah. And of course you have like your, um, courses in college as a business student that kind of touch on a base level, but there's nothing like actually doing it. And yeah, you don't know anything unless you do it. It's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. So this was like, I'm telling you, man, like the past four years has just been like the culmination of, I feel like all the work I've been doing like my whole life, but it's yeah. like, um, it's finally coming together. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. dope, man. So, like, what what was that? What was that experience like? And what what was the jump? Obviously, we met shortly after that because that's yeah. how, actually how we got connected was through that that agency. Yeah. So, well, that's a that's funny because this is a thought I had earlier in our conversation. But um, so after that ended, and and it was a great experience. Like we were doing a lot in the creative space, which has always been cool to me. Yeah. Um, like stuff in the music industry and and all of that. Um, but ultimately, it we parted ways, and. I think that innate feeling we were talking about. Yeah. Um, 
So you and I had met probably like six months before that kind of ended that yeah. situation. Um, and I think it was like a month that I took off from basically having anything on the side. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I just didn't, I felt weird. Yeah. I felt, I felt bored. I was like, I'm not building, uh, that the metaphor I like to use is like, I, I wasn't wa- watering like all of my plants. Right. Yeah. Like there was something where I was just like, wow, this like entrepreneur, like spirit that I had that I've been nurturing my whole life. Like Gotta for go. just a month, it wasn't, I wasn't doing anything for it. And I felt really weird about it. Yeah. Um, which is and crazy. Like, yeah. Just I, real quick. Cause like most people are like that nine to five and then they're, they're like tired they like home. Like, and then it's just like, I liked having that five to nine. I don't know. Like it was a lot of late nights, but it was something exciting and it kind of yeah. en- energizes you in the long run. Creating and, something. Yeah. And, and the whole time I was doing that too, before jumping to Google, I was even like, I was working the door at, at a local bar. Like I was trying yeah. to get like, had to live, man. I'm making money wherever I can. And yeah. so that would be, uh, it was crazy. Like yeah. I, would, I would go to the nine to five, Work that five to like two a.m. bouncing. Yeah. Damn man, uh, that's figure a, out that's how. That's definitely an eight because yeah. I don't even I don't have that. Any, man. <laughs> hey, that that's was my good. weekend money. That yeah. was my weekend money. Um, it's crazy, but yeah, I just felt bored in that like one month period, and that's where you had been kind of putting an idea in my head that maybe we should start something. And uh, yeah. I was like, yeah, fuck it, like let's let's do it. Yeah. And I and I took a lot of the learnings from that, you know, all, everything, but yeah. f- from that previous like collective, just understanding that like team size like starting something with one other person that has like all the skills that i like i said going back to college i didn't want to do like the finance i didn't want to do the accounting stuff yeah having like the natural skills that kind of um complemented yeah. i knew that i had a feeling they would work out and then i mean we're we're doing pretty well now but yeah. um that's yeah man it's all i feel like it all happens for a reason that's yeah man the whole story's kind of been like that it's crazy because yeah. i remember being like somewhat involved with that agency just knowing people like from college and stuff and then the people that you were with with uh yeah with that, with that creative agency. And then we took a couple trips together. We talked about stuff on the side. I had my own thing going on with my own personal brand. I was growing yeah. on, I was blowing up on social media for a while. And then, you know, you had the, the paid side, the SEO side, I had the content side, yeah. how to like kind of, cause I had my own LLC, I had my own business. I knew how to start it. Yeah. You had it, more everything. of the admin stuff yeah. too, that like I still had to grow there. Yeah. 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 But it's cool because I've learned so much from you on that side. And Likewise, you have you have yeah. a lot of like admin experience that you brought from there like over to me. Like your contract work is crazy. And now we just have these templates where we just switch up a few words and we're, we're good. Yeah. You know, and at some point, hopefully we can automate that. So we don't have to spend time doing that anymore. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but it's but it's become so much easier. Like if we could literally look into like a mirror of like two years ago on how we crazy. were doing these things. Like I remember literally being in my room and we on legal zoom and snip <laughs> yeah, that little ribbon, ribbon. We yeah. <laughs> they're like oh your business owners after like 700 dollars, we're like that's it <laughs> that's yeah. all it takes and then uh the, uh, you kind of hit the ground running from there man i feel like yeah. I, I don't know i mean i would love to hear like your perspective on like what your what you what you're like i don't even know how to, how to describe this in like a in a good way but like what has your been ex- your experience like as you've started your own company? Is there anything that you've learned that you're like, yeah. oh shit, I wish I would have done that better, or I really want to learn this, or like what is what's been your overall experience since you've started your own thing? I feel like honestly, as a business owner, like what I've understood in these past like four or five years is that you're constantly learning. Like oh, yeah. I, I definitely um, every day, every week, I feel like I'm learning something new. Um, I think, I think the biggest thing is just uh, consistency. Yeah. Um. Like we, uh, everyone's had up, up and downs like over the past couple of years. It's been crazy with COVID and everything. Oh yeah. But if you're consistent and can put together like processes, mm. um, it just makes your life easier in the wrong run. Like you talked about the contracts. I told you. Like I used to. It used to be every time that a new opportunity came up, I was writing like a new contract. Oh wow. So from it's scratch. like yeah, from scratch, yeah. which is not you know that's yeah. not efficient at all. Not at all. So. Figuring out how you can refine different processes, how can you make it repeatable? That's like the biggest thing, biggest piece of advice I've gotten in the past couple of years was just like you as a business, no matter what it is, if it's service or a product that you're creating, you need to come up with repeatable processes Mm because that's ultimately how you can scale. Because if it's different every single time, you're going to be fucked because it's just not sustainable if you're just doing extra work over and over, it needs yep. to be repeatable. Mm-hmm. And then that ultimately makes it scalable. Um, so that's something that we focus a lot on this year is just like, what are the processes that we can kind of automate or put together just a, you know, best practice, like steps 
so that we are not losing any time and we're yeah. being as efficient as possible. And now that's ultimately why we're able to scale. Yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah. Cause like it takes a lot of time to build that shit out. And I feel yeah. like that's what scares people away. It's like, I had somebody call me the other day, probably a couple of weeks ago now. And he was like, Hey man, I'm thinking about starting a marketing agency. And I'm like, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking good yeah. luck. There's so much, there's so much work that goes into it. Like, Oh yeah. Like I know how to like, you know, she can make videos and like, we yeah. can just send them clients. I'm like, this is a lot harder than you think. It's yeah. like, it's, it goes back to talking about ads, SEO, you know, that top funnel stuff. Cause creating a business is just like the funnel. Like you have to create a logo typography. You have to have yeah. all that structure. And like, you look at a logo right now, it's like, who is, who is that? You got to recognize them. So yeah. that just comes with like networking, prospecting, sales, it takes so much, man. so much time and so much yeah. effort. And then we've spent so much time doing like the decks, the scripts, the, everything that we've invested in whether it's softwares yeah. or you know just like tools that we use and it's a, it's a lot of money up front and like a lot of things and yeah a lot of education because there's like so many tools out there that nobody knows about and people upcharge and pay a shit ton of money for just for yeah. somebody to tell them like oh this is my this is my email software that i use and it's like oh well i could have i, I would have known that. about yeah. that i would have never paid you five grand you know <laughs> like just yeah. to hear about that but there's so much involved in actually building out a structure of the business. Right. And I feel like there's so much time that we spend like creating that. And like you said, it's so much easier to scale now. Yeah. It's like, Oh, let's, we have an, we have a sales team. Let's hop on this call. It takes 15, 20 minutes. This is what we do. This is what we're really good at. This is our price point. Do you want it? Let's scale it. Yeah. Right. And that's coming from your background and my background. We both scaled companies. We both been a part of, you've been a part of Google. So obviously or who else is going to be better at running Google ads than somebody from Google at five years. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, having like a company that I've scaled and exited. And then at some point here, it's like, we have so much value to offer rather than just a traditional marketing agency. It's like, we can help you scale your company, whether that's just consultations or strategies or yeah. just outside of the marketing piece. Cause marketing is a huge, it's probably the number one thing helps you scale a business by far yeah like you need to market your product or service but that's why i went into it like i said when i was picking majors i'm like yeah. all right what's something that every business needs it's so broad yeah though, it's very know? broad it's yeah broad but there's so much in there that if you are knowledgeable in it it's one of the most scalable things in the world because everyone needs it exactly right? yeah. it's almost like birth death marketing like like <laughs> everything it happens literally literally everything it's like the most in demand is like doctors well, and like even funerals and like that kind of stuff but like everyone needs to scale their business or their company or their product or whatever they're well, doing. Well, even we haven't talked about personalized branding, but that's still, that's marketing too. Like yeah. Everyone needs to be able to market themselves. Even yeah. if you just want to stay in a corporate nine to five, if you don't market yourself internally, yeah, you're going to get looked over for those promotions. You're going to, it's, it really is ingrained like in every aspect of life. Like exactly. you want to be well known and what is your, what is your, the perception that people have of you? That's yeah. all marketing. Yeah, man. It's it's crazy. And we could go into so, so much with like that, so much more on like the content, personal, how it actually relates to like people's lives and stuff like that. But yeah. I'm excited to see what the next year unfolds because we're projecting a yeah, huge I'm year, man. And it's yeah. like, I'm so pumped up to have that. And honestly, I've never in my entire life, I've <laughs> maybe it's that like single mom five kids. Like I've never, I've always had like trust issues. I'm like, I don't really trust anybody. I'm out here yeah. just trying to scale it and get, make it to that point. But dude, you've been the best business partner from jump, Thank like you, really start to finish, man. And I know we're it's not you, finished cause we're about to explode this yeah, shit. Yeah. But, um, Far from finished. And I know that, I know we're going to be hopping on the podcast a lot, talking about a lot more stuff. Yeah, driving man, a lot I love more value. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. We're going to be talking a lot, uh, bringing a lot more value to the community cause we're obviously creating on our social channel. We really want to like drive, people to our educational and our strategies and consultations, building brand awareness, top of the funnel. So yeah. that's kind of what um, I want to gear towards. I know we'll do a ton of these, but your story is also sick. I want to touch, touch on that too. Like from, you, you know, your family, you know, being immigrants coming over here, you having like this, this drive from such a young age. Um, and obviously the podcast, I got to keep it on brand. And I always ask everybody before we hop off is yeah. what's your next move to continue the success that you've had from literally since you were like 10 years old, you know, from, you, you know, starting the music, getting in the music industry, selling beats to now owning a marketing agency. What's your, what's your vision to continue the success that you've had throughout your entire life? Yeah, man. So I think it's definitely continue always learning. I'm one of those people that believes in that saying that like, you should never be the smartest person in the room. Mm -hmm. um, and you see, we both have great networks, mm -hmm. always keeping valuable people around me that I think I can learn from and that are, are good influences. Um, but definitely 
going to keep learning. Um, I've also looked at every single like job or endeavor that I've gone into about, about like how can this enrich me as myself, my own personal brand. Like yeah. how my what tools am I able to add to my kit off of this experience? Of course. So I'll keep that um, kind of just in my mind as I pro- approach everything in life. Mm-hmm. Um, but my next move is really scaling this business with you. Um, hopefully, being able to you know go. All in with it very soon. Oh yeah, um, and make that jump because I know we're about to really have a great year. Yeah, um, and then ultimately, the next thing that I want to learn, I feel that I have a great understanding of like the tech side and and really like the the ground level work. Yeah, um, we've done a great job learning kind of the admin and how to structure and, and start to scale. Mm-hmm. Um, want to understand what it looks like to really like partner on a on that higher level with other brands, right? So yeah. Um, talking to the biggest man in the room yeah. um, as we start to work with like a bit more uh, advanced companies, the Nikes and Adidas. Yeah. Like what does it look like um, when you've reached that level and you have like a full team underneath you and oh, how yeah. do you keep moving the business forward? Cause like I said, I don't want to be stagnant, keep refining the processes. Yeah. Um, so as we keep growing, mm-hmm. want to make sure that like my strategic mind is growing as well. So we need to get, in the room with some of these people and just and understand like what that next level looks like. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. That's why I think that, like I said before, I think that's why we're so like level set and why I think things have taken off the way I have for us because mm-hmm. we have very similar mindsets and that's like another, another huge thing that I've always wanted to make sure that I am more than ready, prepared and capable of doing is handling those meetings in those larger rooms with those big name people or big name brands. So yeah, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm excited to see what we've got going on because we've, the last two years they've flown by but the, if we like it's i crazy. said if we look back at what we used to do two years ago to what we're doing now and then if we can fast forward like even just like look and take a peek behind the current what the two years ahead of us is for it's gonna be disgusting honestly. yeah it's gonna but, be crazy but man you got a hell of a story i know we've never really talked about mm-hmm. too much from start to finish so mm-hmm. um it's been dope you inspired the shit out of me man and i'm really too, excited brother. to see Thanks where we having. can where we can where we can take this thing but i appreciate too, your time today bro yes sir thanks for having me and i'll be back yes sir